Hey guys, welcome back to Field Notes. Uh, this month I'm back out on that uh, big private property in southwest Georgia. We're doing uh, snake inventory and largely using drift fences. So uh, you can see behind me back here is one of my drift fences. I've got uh, a number of them open this week. And uh, you know, I'm just hoping to catch a diversity of snakes in these traps. Uh, so what I do, uh, you know, pretty much I open these traps, you know, place them out along the fences, and then come back every morning and check them to see if we have any snakes. And then depending on the weather and depending on the fence, I'll also check them in the afternoon uh, to ensure that you know, snakes aren't being, or any animals not being exposed too much to the, the heat and the elements. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing, and you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, that uh, I actually find some cool stuff. Now, when you run these fences, it's no guarantee you'll actually catch snakes. Uh, you can run these and get nothing at all. Uh, but you know, fingers crossed. Hopefully, we'll actually get a few snakes in the fences this week. And uh, if I find anything cool, I'll be sure to show you guys. So let's get started. All right. So here's one of our. Um, drift fences on this property. It's down in some mixed bottomland, uh, predominantly hardwood forest. I'm going to go ahead and check these traps now and uh, you know, see if we've got anything cool. And also just kind of walk you guys through uh, the setup and you know how we go about checking these fences. So here we are. We got uh, some of these screen traps on the end here. And you see all where traps have big shade covers. Um, that way we're minimizing any sort of um, excess stress, uh, heat exposure to any of the animals. Uh, so I always have a, a shade cover. And then in each of these traps, we're gonna have um, a big sponge. And so after I check traps today, I'm gonna go around with some water and kind of rehydrate the sponge. And so if we get any amphibians, any toads or frogs, uh, in these traps, uh, they'll have some moisture in addition to the shade. So, once again, looking here, you kind of evert the funnels to check underneath. A lot of the uh, small snakes will tuck themselves up underneath the funnel. Um, and then we've got, you see, we kind of put a little bit of sand in there in the mouth of the trap, and that seems to uh, encourage some species to go into traps more frequently if there's that kind of earthen ramp. All right, nothing in there. Got a snake. All right, there's a little bit better lighting. Uh, yeah, so you can see that we've got a, a young southern black racer in here. Uh, he's lost his juvenile coloration, but he's still not very big. Um, but there you go. It's a... Uh, First snake we've got this morning. Now what we do to get the snakes out of these screen traps, um, oftentimes, you know, we'll just evert the funnel here. You just pull the screen out the other way. And we'll tip the trap up, and he'll come out the hole. But with these uh, traps that only have one funnel, you can actually unfold the back end as well to get them out. Just go ahead and try to get it back out the funnel. All right, here we go, just like that. Nice little southern black racer. He looks to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, he's not hot at all. He's actually quite cool to the touch, so that's really good. Shows that the, the shade cover is working, working well, and we're not uh, causing too much stress to these snakes. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and Finish checking the fence and then we'll take some data on the snake. All right, so in this last trap, I had a couple of these little Eastern Spadefoot metamorphs. They seem to be quite abundant down here in this lowland forest, uh, in this area, I've seen quite a few of them. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and let them go out here near this moist log. Uh, it's a good ways away from the fence. Um, so hopefully they can just go find somewhere to hide. 
All right, so uh, we got a nice overcast morning. It's still pretty hot, but uh, sun's not out yet. Um, checking this sandhill drift fence. Uh, it's real humid. We had some recent rain, so I'm hopeful we may have got a few snakes last night. So uh, let's go check it out. And the sponges. Nope. <laughs> Look at that. All right. A nice scarlet snake and a cool beetle and scorpion right there next to them. That's why I really like these water dishes that I put in here. They've got a, a nice cavity up underneath. And so uh, not only do they have water, they've got a nice place to hide up against the cool dish. So uh, that's where I expect whenever I get snakes in these boxes, I think that's where they're going to be. That's really cool. Come here, buddy. All right. Looks quite a bit different from a lot of the uh, scarlet snakes that we see on our preserve and out further, further east in Georgia. So, good stuff. So these scarlet snakes are uh, an upland species. Uh, they can be found in a, a variety of upland habitats. Uh, but one of the places that I see them the most is on Sandhill. And when I'm running drift fence or, you know, doing road cruising surveys in Sandhill, um, they can be one of the most abundant species uh, from those surveys. Now, they are uh, primarily nocturnal, so uh, you wouldn't see them that much during the day unless you were operating a drift fence or flipping cover. Um, but in these habitats, they can be quite dense. And so I'm not surprised at all that we're getting uh, scarlet snakes here. Uh, they're really neat snakes that can be really pretty. Um, as you can see, they got a lot of red on them. Um, it's kind of a tri-colored snake with uh, red or orange, black, and then either white or kind of a yellow. And uh, some people confuse them with scarlet king snakes. However, uh, they are not very closely related, and uh, they're pretty easy to tell apart with um, you know, these markings on the scarlet snake being more of big saddles. They're not complete bands because if you look at the belly, um, the belly is plain white. Um, and on scarlet king snakes, they're actually complete bands, and they'll go all the way around the body of the snake. Uh, but these are really neat snakes. Um, they have a very specialized diet. Uh, they mostly eat reptile eggs. Um, they will occasionally take lizards, and I think they've been documented eating very small snakes. Um, however, they primarily feed on lizard and small snake eggs. And uh, in a few instances, they've even been documented eating things like sea turtle eggs. And you, you're wondering, how can a tiny snake like this eat a, a, a turtle egg about the size of a ping pong ball? So they've got some pretty specialized dentition. They've got some enlarged teeth that allow them to puncture and create slits in larger eggs, in eggs that they cannot swallow whole. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll bite the egg and then they'll just slurp up uh, the fluid that leaks out of that egg. So that allows them to feed on, you know, snake eggs or uh, turtle eggs that are much larger than what they'd be able to swallow normally. So really, really neat snakes.